Now work is also a form of spirituality. To do one's job well can lead you to the highest spiritual goals. A doctor does his work dedicatedly and with, filled with devotion can also become a spiritual path. A shoemaker puts all of his energies and whatever power he has within in him to make that pair of shoes to such perfection that in the very making of it he brings forth that eternal spiritual energy that is within him. Hmm? Now, many people want to be on a spiritual path not with total dedication, but with wishful thinking. That I wish I was on the spiritual path, and because I wish that, hmm, I am on the spiritual path. Now, a wishful thinker is not necessarily a seeker. Now, that very search you have in you must bring about certain difficulties. Because, as I said many times, that in this worldly life there are always polarities. The more you try and pull in the right direction, the wrong direction has some hold over you and tries to hold you back. And the reason is due to, due to your own making. We are set in certain grooves, uh, certain modes of thinking, certain ways. Now one has to overcome that by exercising strict discipline within ourselves. So, when there are these difficulties, they must be welcomed. Because difficulty is the greatest teacher in life. If you had all the happiness and things that you think you need, or you want rather, then you would forget God. You'd forget divinity. You never remember divinity when you're totally happy. And no one is really totally happy. But you remember divinity most when you are in trouble. Then you say, oh God, hmm? what a life, what a business. If you are so merciful, O oh Lord, then why all these troubles and difficulties? But the poor Lord has nothing to do with our difficulties. The Lord does not give you pleasure and he does not give you pain. Hmm? It is a neutral energy given to you as your birthright from which you have originated and you are that divine energy. But here, because of all the conditionings of the experiences of previous lives and in this life, you block the divinity from shining through. Hmm? So it is you, you and no one but you, that produces this divinity. Now, the aim of these talks and spiritual practices is to bring about a certain understanding hmm, of the difficulties. For, as we do know, that every adversity contains within itself an opportunity. Hmm? Now, what do we see? Do we see the uh, adversities only, or do we see the opportunities? Now, if our attention through understanding is led to the opportunities, the sting of the difficulties and uh, adversities disappear. Hmm? There is really no foundation in a difficulty a little perhaps, and that is necessary to goad you on. And if, and if that was not there, you would just become a vegetable, a non-thinking being hmm? that will not be able to function. So, if you have some difficulty, may you have some more. <laughs> Difficulties are there for expansion for greater awareness, for greater understanding of life. 
So difficulty is a blessing in disguise. But when man's mind is wrapped up totally in the difficulty, hmm, then he loses balance. He just sees darkness and not the light. He sees the adversities and not the opportunities that are there in those very so-called adversities. No man in this world has difficulties if you look at it from the right angle. Hmm? They are lessons to be learned. So the snake of difficulty will bite. Ah, but if you have taken out the poison from its fangs, hmm? it won't poison you. So why should we live poisoned lives and get our minds entwined in those difficulties all the time? Now this comes through understanding. And understandings are of course the realizations. And a realization is nothing but an understanding gained and assimilated. And when it is assimilated, when it forms part and parcel of the entire process of our mind and body, then it is called assimilation. Then you have really digested it. Hmm? Say a man wants to attain God, or say you, or rather, he wants to make a million pounds. Hmm? Now this is possible for everyone. Within five years you can do it. Is your thought force strong enough? Is your yearning strong enough? Have you got that burning desire whereby you want to put in all your energies to that aim in view, to that goal? And you'll find that your mind will be so conditioned that automatically, because of the conditioning of the mind in that direction, and because of bringing all those thoughts together into one force, things will happen to you without you even consciously wanting it to happen. Now that's the secret of worldly living. Therefore, we do the candle practice, which is a very, very important practice. It has been practiced for thousands of years in the East, where all the mental energies, without effort, are gathered together into one focal point. And once one becomes habituated in that, then everything we do in life will always become a focal point with total concentration. So, there is no difficulty but our failure to see hmm, the beauty of the energy that is within us, not understanding it and not allowing it free reign to play. And that is what is meant by nature is always supporting us, but we block Mother Nature from supporting us. That is the trouble. So, why dwell on difficulties? Dwell on the opposite of difficulties. Hmm? Think of those. Develop constructive ideas. Hmm? If someone's business is running at a loss or is in the red, it is not going to help thinking of the red figures on the bank statement. No. What am I going to do to overcome it? I am not going to wait for any spiritual signs and all these things that will fall out from heaven. There's no such thing. Mental quirks. We do not wait for signs. Do or die. Ah. Hmm? I want to be out of this problem and I'm going to do my best to get out of it. Even if I have to work 24 hours of the day and I'm going to get out of it. Now, if one has that aim and that determination, there are no difficulties in life. Hmm? And then, as we said, what is life without the fun and pleasure of difficulties? Because it is joy too. Hmm? Everything that happens 
is a joy. And it is our attitude in life, how we look at things, that determines of the outcome of that so-called difficulty. Like, you know, the, uh, the stanza which I've been repeating over, it's my favorite one, I've repeated it all over and over again, with two men behind prison bars, one saw mud, the other saw stars. Huh? I've repeated that a million times. I love it so much. Two people in the same circumstances, hmm? meaning the same difficulty, huh? but one could see the glory and the other the gloom. Hmm? So, so. Spiritual practices help one to gain that strength of thinking in a proper way. Right thinking and right action. Now by this we mean a proper attitude towards the situation in question and acting on it and not sitting still. Because the proper attitude, the right thinking, naturally must bring about right action. And that is the secret of life. That is the way out of all difficulties. 